In this video, I want to talk about the issue of can we identify all the parameters within a simultaneous equation model? So what does identification mean? It means can we actually estimate the parameters? And the example I'm going to use here is the sort of canonical example, which is always given as an example of whether or not equations can be identified in a simultaneous equation framework. So the, the idea here is that we have a supply equation, which is the quantity supply, Q, is equal to, let's say, beta naught plus beta 1 times the price plus beta 2 times some exogenous factor Z, which influences supply. So this could be, let's say, something to do with the weather plus some error term epsilon 1. So just to be clear, this represents a supply equation. And then we have a corresponding demand equation, which is quite similar in form to the supply equation. So we have that Q, where Q is the quantity demanded, is equal to gamma naught plus gamma one times the price, plus some other factors which are contained within this error term epsilon two. So I should just note here that we're assuming that beta one is greater than naught because of the fact that the supply curve uh, actually slopes upwards. And we're supposing that gamma one is gonna be less than naught because of the fact that the demand equation typically slopes downwards. Okay, so you might ask yourself, can we actually identify the parameters beta 1 and gamma 1 econometrically given the sort of data of Q, P and Z? Well, the answer is that, first of all, we can't use OLS on these systems because we know that it's going to be both biased and inconsistent. So what we could actually do is we could use our instrument, or we could use Z rather, as an instrument for price in the second equation. And to see this, sort of think about the situation. So Z is something like, let's say, the weather, which only influences supply in this particular good we're talking about here. So weather is definitely going to have some sort of impact on price. But because we're saying, we're sort of assuming that Z isn't contained directly within this demand equation, neither is it contained within this error term or as an independent variable, then Z is going to be correlated with P, but it's importantly not going to be correlated with epsilon 2. So it sort of satisfies our condition for being a good instrumental variable. So using Z as an instrument for price in the second equation should mean that we can actually identify gamma 1 OK. So can we actually do the same thing in the first equation? Could we use Z as an instrument for price in the first equation? Well, we can't because the trouble is Z is already contained within our first equation. So we can't use Z as an instrument for P because we also need to use Z as an instrument for itself if we do that. So we would actually need some further exogenous variable which was contained within the demand equation which wasn't contained within the supply equation. So in this situation here, we can estimate gamma one, but we cannot estimate beta one. So we're not able to estimate the parameter beta one if we have data on Q, P and Z. So that's problematic. So what's the intuition as to why we actually can't estimate the parameter beta one in this situation? Well, the reason is if we draw our demand and supply curves here, so we've got a demand curve which slopes downwards and we've got a supply curve which slopes upwards. So that might represent one particular situation where we've got a market equilibrium which is given by let's say Q star and P star, which would actually be the data which we would actually see uh, in our particular economy of interest. So the idea here is that this factor Z here in this above equation, the effect which that has on our system is to shift the supply curve around. But because it's not contained within the demand curve, the demand curve stays where, stays where it is. So the idea here is that we might shift supply to the right. So then we would get a new value of price and quantity. We might have a situation where the weather was poor, so the supply curve shifted to the left, and then we get a new level of price and quantity, which is given by the intersection of the demand and the supply curve. And if you think about loads of different situations where you've got different weather, so it shifts some shifts that are going miles to the left, some shifts that are going quite a way to the right, then essentially you can see that the locus of points which are going to be traced out by this are actually going to represent the demand equation. So we're actually going to be able to recover the shape of the demand equation because of the fact that we have this exogenous explanatory variable which only appeared in the supply side equation.
correspondingly, there is not going to be the equivalent for the supply equation because there are no factors which affect demand which don't affect supply. So there's no exogenous factor which is shifting the demand curve around. What we would actually need if, is, if we were to draw the situation again, what we would need is we would have price and quantity and we've got our supply curve and demand curve. We would want something which shifted the demand curve around but did not affect the supply curve. Because if we did that, then essentially we would be able to trace out the shape of the supply curve, which econometrically essentially means that we're going to be able to estimate the parameter beta 1. So the rule is here that we need at least one explanatory factor, or at least for these equations we're talking about here, which appears in the demand equation, which doesn't appear in the supply equation. And because that situation is not satisfied here, we cannot actually estimate the parameters in the supply equation or at least we cannot estimate the parameter beta 1.